Welcome to the painting table. We are going to paint up some miniatures this time. I hope everybody is here to <laughs> enjoy this. This is going to be awesome. I'm excited to show you exactly how I paint up some miniatures. I've had a lot of questions about it. So we're going to get to painting some miniatures on. We are going to decide what we're going to paint. As you saw from the title, we're going to be using Nemesis characters. We're going to paint up a couple of Nemesis characters. That's going to be our plan. Let's... Uh, I'm going to show you the characters we're going to paint. I'm going to show you kind of the paints we're using and what I'm actually doing when I paint. So we'll see how this all transpires. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, uh, please let me know. Give me feedback. This is great. This is something new I'm trying. Uh, there already are some great places to watch. You'll paint uh, some miniatures and learn a lot from. For example, there's actually two that are really neat right now. Rob's Tabletop World. He does a lot of painting and he learns a lot of up-close painting on miniatures and how to do it. And they bring them straight to the table and plays games absolutely fantastic go check out his channel also rob's gaming table he also is his wife is in charge of painting some miniatures and it's pretty cool to watch him as well so those are a couple places you can see some painting tutorials i'm going to try some here myself and see how it goes here uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can actually get this up and running and do the right thing let's hopefully this is all going well and we are actually running. That's my that's my goal here. Let's see if it's actually running. <laughs> I hope so. All right. We are going to see the miniatures we're going to paint. And then we're going to figure out which ones. Okay. Here's the deal. First off, my lighting here is a little bit weird because I have the lighting that I use for my painting, which I have a huge light up there. And it kind of shines down on top of my head. So it's all white and everything. But I can't do anything about that because I really want to see what we're focusing on here. We're going, <laughs> we're going to figure out what we're going to paint. Let's look at some of the cards we have that we can paint. I've used the Survivor and the, uh, what's the other one? The Lab Rat. We used the Lab Rat and the Survivor in the last playthrough. And I want to do another playthrough of Nemesis Lockdown. So I thought doing a couple new characters would be really cool. Uh, here are a few of the options we have. We have either the Hacker. We could do him. We could do the Xenobiologist. She has some cool things going for her. We have the Sentry. And we also have the janitor as well. So we'll see if any of those are something we could, we should probably be doing. I have some of the miniatures that go along with them. We have to decide which ones we're going to do. And the reason I'm showing you some of the cards is because the colors that I'm going to be using are primarily what you see on here. I don't usually stray from the colors that are on the card. So he's going to be primarily orange. That's going to be the plan. This guy's blue. This person's going to be probably a gray and black. And this one's going to be pretty green. That's going to be the plan here. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. I've got these four miniatures here's the miniatures go along with them and i'm gonna try to do i have this like close-up camera i'm gonna try uh it's one of those things where i'm gonna have to put like my hand behind it so you can actually see the miniature but here's the xenobiologist in all her glory here she's got this cool looking arm behind her which is pretty neat and oh, looks pretty awesome we also have uh this what do you call it? this guy right here he's the this is the hacker guy he's pretty awesome i like the hacker We'll see if we might, might, might paint this gap. We'll see it. He's got a lot of things going on for him. We have the janitor right here. Another cool looking miniature. All these miniatures from Waking Realms are just out of control. They're super good. I really like them. And we have the last one is our sentry. Interesting looking miniature as well here. The sentry. Interesting faceplate he's got. That's an interesting faceplate. But... All right, those are miniatures. Um, if you have an, if you have recommendations of which one you want to see painted, please let me know. Um, you're not going to have a lot of time to tell me, so you better tell me now. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm just going to pick a couple. Because uh, all of these, these four all got pretty much the same type of votes in the unboxing. The uh, Lab Rat and the Survivor both got the most votes. And these all came in pretty close to second, and or third and fourth and fifth and somewhere in there. So if you're interested in one of these in particular, please let me know and we'll try to get that one to go. It'll, it, it, it should be pretty cool. Hopefully it works. Uh, so unless I hear anything extra, I think we're gonna go with the hacker because he looks pretty cool. And there's a lot going on. I think it'd be pretty neat to paint him up. And we have the xenobiologist. We're gonna do those two. Those are our plants. We're gonna use those two and see what we can do here. So I'm going to take the two miniatures. We'll put them aside for now. I'll get them painted up eventually. Who knows? Maybe we'll come back to this at some point. And we're going to start with these. So the first thing I do when I go to paint my miniatures is I kind of look to see what's going on here. God, he's got a lot going on with them. I don't really see any. I usually start with any type of flesh tones I need to do. But I think he is. He he doesn't have anything going for him. If you look, he uh, 
He's got uh, just all robes and garb everywhere. He doesn't have anything you really see. I think I might even paint that little part metal. All right. Then we have the Xenobiologist. She actually does have some flesh shown here. So we'll just start with her. And normally we prime our miniatures with like some kind of gray. That's usually the plan. Um, let me see if I can figure something out here. Uh, oh, let's see. That's not going to work. Let's see if I can find. I am still learning a little bit. All right. So we do have some people in the chat. Sorry it took me a while to find the chat. <laughs> Because I had it set up a little bit wrong. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody joining me. Killy, excuse for gaming. Twizzy J, thanks for joining me. Awesome to have you here. Cool to see you. Uh, let's see here. We've got... <laughs> I don't have the hands for painting, I see. That's pretty funny. Uh, normally, I have an ability to pop this out and actually use it. And I think I might be able to do that if I can figure out how to do it. Please bear with me. I am doing my best here. Let's see here. Uh and see if that worked in the chat. I think it might have jumped out on there. Oh, I might not have that set up in here. I have to work on that. All right, sorry about that. We're still going to do some painting. I'm going to re read some of the chats. Normally I can pop them up, but it's not going to work this time, I don't think, for me, which is sad. But that is okay. Uh, but I do appreciate everybody being here. <laughs> uh, some people haven't... <laughs> Excuse for gaming, Jay has. I have not painted minis, but it was in art class 18 years ago. Yes, that's. Uh, I actually started painting miniatures back when I was doing Warhammer for a long time ago. It's pretty cool. Uh, and, and yes, any paint is better than no paint at all. Sakuto says hello, hello to you too. It's nice to see you all. So I have all my paints right over here, and we're going to just decide which ones we're going to use. I got a whole bunch of them. I have an assortment of contrast that I use, and then I have a full set of army painters that I had. And I've had these. I've had the army painters for a long time, but the contrast paints, of course, came out when the contrast paints do. Let's see. If we look at her card, we're going to try to figure out what we're going to do here. I think I've got a flesh tone for it. It's going to be pretty good. There are two different ones that come with the contrast paints. And we're going to start with one if I could find it. There it is. I've got two. One of them is Gillian, Gilman Flesh. I'm going to say something's wrong. I'm just, wait till I pronounce all these poorly. And Darkoth Flesh. That's the other one. And I think we're going to use Darkoth Flesh for this one. That's going to be our plan. I'm going to use this paint right here. Now, some of the paints you're going to see, like, actually keep some of the... They don't mix very well until you shake them up, so you do have to give most of them a pretty good shake if you're going to use that paint. Um, this one usually holds itself pretty well, but I'm going to be shaking all these paints almost every time before I use them, because what these paints do is not only do they paint, they also are going to put a base and a wash on kind of at the same time, so it makes things go a lot faster when you're painting. That's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, we're just going to open a pot and grab the brush and start to go to work on her. Let's see how we do here. Let's grab my paintbrush. I use Series 7s. So I've had these forever, absolutely forever. I would say years and years. And that's the deal. I started painting this year. I've been painting for three months. And I loved it. That's awesome to hear. I'm super excited to hear when people start painting because it's always such, it, it's so cool because you start like from the beginning and you're not really sure what you're doing and you try really hard and it looks cool. And the more you do it, the cooler it gets and the more fun I have. It's It took me a, it took me a while to get to where I am and I learned a lot of stuff from YouTube. Like st I've watched a lot of uh, Rob's Tabletop World and uh, just recently Rob's Gaming Table also does some painting, live painting stuff. But a lot of Tabletop World is where I learned an absolute ton of stuff. If you don't know who he is, please go check out his channel. He has a lot of great painting stuff. He also has some great playthroughs. He's awesome and he's a really cool guy. So uh, what you're supposed to do with contrast paints, they tell you just to glob it on. I don't glob it on. I actually take it, I put it in my brush, just like this, and then I will actually lightly put it on there where I think it's gonna go. So we're gonna try to get it just on here. And with, usually you wanna prime it in gray if you're using any type of contrast paints, just because it seems to work better. You can use white, but don't use black, that's never gonna work. And if it does, that's awesome, but I don't think it would ever work. So we're gonna put this skin tone on. Now the cool thing about contrast paints, you could double the coat and you're gonna get a thicker use for it. And it's gonna actually be a, like just thicker on there overall, which is kind of cool. 
but I'm not going to. We're just going to go over once on this. So we have that. Now, if I look at her card, it also shows it seems like she's got flesh here that she holds up. So that must mean that that is part of her arm. So we're going to get a little bit more hair on her brush. And instead of loading it up like they tell you to in like some of the videos you watch, I actually do brush some off. It's just the way I do it. And we're just going to go ahead and put it on. Now, the interesting thing about contrast paints that is a little worrisome is it's hard to, if you go over where you're supposed to be painting, and you kind of get to another place where you're not wanting that color, it's tough to get the other color to fit, to stick on there and go over the other paint. Cause it's a, just, it's, it's, that's the type of paint it is. At least that's what I have found. So I'm just gonna go over all her parts here as I'm probably off camera here. We're gonna go over all the different parts with this flesh tone here and we'll get them just like that. Now, I, now that I've gotten the flesh tone for her on her face and her hands, I'm gonna get a little bit more on this other arm over here. After I did that, I would switch over to the other one so that I could decide to use, I would paint his flesh tones up as well. Just, I kind of go back and forth between miniatures because contrast does take a little bit of time to dry compared to other paints. And sometimes you paint right on top, like right next to it, you can bleed them together, which eh, sometimes if that's what you want to do, that'd be fantastic. But if you don't want it to do, then you don't want to do it like that. Let's see, there we go. So we got her hands done. Her hands are done, good to go. Wash it off. Got a nice little paper towel over here. Dry off her brush. There we go. Her flesh tone's done. I'm going to just put that pot away. I don't need my Gillian flesh because you don't need any flesh for this guy. He doesn't need any flesh colors. Now, we said we're going to do primarily kind of grays and black. So, believe it or not, a lot of her robe, I might not even do. I might leave it with that sun drop that they do. It's pretty awesome. So, Croats, painting on YouTube is really good. I watched his KDM videos. <laughs> Yes, I painted all my KDM guys up. I even magnetized them. I was actually working on one just a little while ago. Here's the hand of one of the guys I was working on. I was trying to, I'm magnetizing this one up a little bit. The magnet's right in there. You can barely see it, but this guy's, she's got uh, the lion's armor here. It's hard to see because they're so small, but it's hard to get these magnets in there out of control. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometimes, how to magnetize guys. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, wow, that would be something. Uh, it involves drills. I'll tell you that right now. Lots of drills. Let's look at the rest of her card. So she's got some black and gray in here. Oh, that's shining really good. Blacks and grays. So I think we're going to get our black. And I have the black I use is the contrast paint from Black Templar. This black is amazing. Absolutely out of control. The reason I like it is black is actually pretty tough to paint, mainly because it's black. It's just it goes on black. But the way you get your like definition in it is that you kind of do like a, maybe a dry brush over it or you kind of do something else to make it stand out. But this paint actually stands it out perfectly. So again, I'm just gonna take my brush, put some black in there on the brush. I even dip it in there, pot, because the one on this here doesn't work too well. There you go, there you go. got some paint on there. All right, so I'm gonna look at her little card here and see if there's any type of, play. I like her black is all through here. She's got a zipper down here. Sometimes when you go like this, you see the zipper, you kind of go, eh, 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 eh. not doing the zipper. We're just gonna paint all this black and we're gonna leave some of this gray. Uh, no, this is where we get our artistic freedom. I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna look at this and what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing that she's got a lot of this. I'm gonna paint her entire thing black here. That's gonna be our plan. We're just gonna start up here and start putting it a little bit all over the place here. I'm gonna leave, yeah, I think we're gonna, no, we're gonna paint this all black. That's gonna be the plan. But we're gonna leave the outer edge. We're gonna leave the outer edge gray. See, I'm kind of leaving that trim. I'm gonna leave the trim gray. I think that'll be kind of cool. I'm gonna leave it, leave it gray. I'm gonna scoot it right up on top there and through there, all right. So a little bit there. I've already started her shoulder a little bit, but we're gonna go and hit all these parts. Again, maybe leaving a little bit gray here on the outside edge there. Let's see how this goes. In there, a little bit there, a little bit there. All right, and I'm gonna go all the way down her arm, just because I want to. We're still gonna leave a little bit of that gray, if we can. Sometimes you don't, You then you go in there and you go, oh, well, I'm just not gonna paint that. I'm gonna leave there's a little bit of a running thing here. I'm gonna say that that's like a a belt she's got. So we're gonna paint that a different color. But the rest of this, I'm gonna paint in here black. And I'm just gonna kind of shove my brush in there a little bit and get it black. I got a little bit more over on the corner here. Boom, there you go, excellent. I'm pretty excited about that. So now let's get the other side. Let's see if we can grab the other side here and we're gonna paint, we're gonna just kind of swing this around and see what we can do here. Be the plan. I would watch how you magnetize your minis. I have only built the starting survivors, white line and butcher. 
Oh, well, that's a start. That's for sure. Um, I, you know, I learned how to magnetize my minis again doing Warhammer because if anybody's ever played Warhammer, you buy. Like, I used to play Warhammer Fantasy, and when you buy the miniatures for Warhammer Fantasy back then, they were a lot of money. Well, they still are a lot of money. What am I talking about? They go exponentially up as time goes on, and <laughs> and so I wouldn't be able to like I'd buy a pack of orcs, and I just I would I'd be disappointed because I would buy a pack of orcs, and they're a lot of money. And I put swords and shields on them, thinking, "Oh, that's gonna be awesome!" And I'll bring them to the table, and all of a sudden, I find out swords and shields eh, weren't too awesome. They got they got royally wrecked by something. So I thought, now I gotta go buy other ones and try spears. You know, I could have just said these have spears, but I'm one of those weird players that plays like what you see is what you get when you're playing those kind of games. So, in the long run, I learned how to put magnets in my arms of my orcs so that I could bring different kind of orcs to the battle whenever I went. So, we're working here slowly. Oh, that's not a very good picture. I'm going to put it over here. This is, I think, your better one. Um, again, I have to kind of let it focus on it for a little while there. But So we've got some of that black on there as she rolls out of the picture. Um, and again, I'm trying to keep some of that gray line. That's my plan because I think that's kind of cool. Um, we'll see how, how it works. But let me see a little bit here I want to hit. There we go. All right. I think she's doing okay so far. Getting some black on there. We're going to go onto this side of it over here and see if we can get some of these. Now, notice I haven't gone back to my brush and my paint pot yet because you can get a lot of this on here, which is pretty cool. Currently painting 300 plus miniatures for War of the Ring board game. Oh my gosh, that's out of control. <laughs> 300 plus miniatures. Wow. Well, I shouldn't say that. I think if in total of all the miniatures I have for my games, probably reach about that. You filmed a quick video for me on the magnets. I did. It helped me magnetize. I did do a quick video a long time ago because somebody asked me for one. But I should probably do an in-depth one. Maybe that's something I could do in the future because people could watch me do it and they'd have an idea. Um, it, it, it's, it's, you better have a drill. and <laughs> so I, the, the trick is drills. Uh, what else? Drills, green stuff, and uh, little teeny earth rare magnets is what I'd use. That's how I get them to work. And yeah, I think with all the people in the comments asking for it, I'll make sure I do that. I'll maybe do that next. We'll see what I can do. I have to figure out what I need to magnetize, though. But we're painting her up. We're going to get her up here. That's going to be our plan. I think that's pretty good. All right, now I'm going to get a little more black. Let's put a little more black. Now, some people go and always wash their brush off. Again, I don't. I just kind of go back and forth. My, uh, I have two philosophies for painting. Um... If anybody watched me, I had I did an interview with uh, William. We talked about painting for like oh, I don't know, like an hour and a half, um, which was awesome. We had a fantastic time talking about it. But I I kind of relayed my ideas of painting, which a lot of my painting is has to do with well, first off, I consider my painting technique slop and drop. Um, you slop it on the miniature and then you drop it on the table. That's the deal. That's how you get your miniature on the table. You slop the paint on and you drop it on the table. Does it have to be perfect? No. Does it have to have paint on it? Sure. That's all that really matters. Um, I'm going to... There's a little piece of gray. Yeah, I'm going to keep that gray. That's fine. Uh, and that's really all there is to it when it comes to painting miniatures. So slop and drop, first rule. So anything you see that I paint is going to be painted with slop and drop technique. Paint it on there, and then it drops on the table. That's the deal. The other philosophy I have when it comes to painting is paint on, move on. Sometimes when you're painting some miniatures, you might come back to them and go like, oh man, I really didn't like the way that turned out. I think I'm going to try something different. And you might reprime the miniature and paint it again, or you could even like try to do different highlights or shades or something. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, once a miniature has paint on it, you're good. Paint on, move on. Move on to the next miniature. Don't dwell on the past. That's my philosophy. At least that's, that's the way I do it. <laughs> An excuse for gaming is about to fight the butcher. All right. I won't have me holding your, my hand and, and kanji to swipe him in the face with a cat gut bow. That'll be awesome. I have, I'll have to watch that. Uh, the Butcher fight. I love the Butcher. For those of you who have not played Kingdom Death, I recommend it. It's a good game. I've got her coat all done there. I think we're done with that coat. Now let's see. She's got some... Now I'm going to leave this gray right in here just because I like having that... Uh, that shirt's going to remain gray. I think we're going to leave it gray. I need to paint her goggles, and I need to paint the 
thing running here. I need to paint this strap. That's my plan. And then we got to work on all the stuff that she's carrying. But that's not going to be too tough because it's going to be metal. And metal's pretty easy. You just paint metal paint. I don't do any type. I know there's like, uh, some people have like non, was it, non-metallic metals. It's a long process. If you're interested in learning about it, I'm sure there's some YouTube videos out there. You're not going to learn from me because, again, we're slopping and we're dropping. We're putting this stuff on the table as fast as I possibly can. Um, and she also has gray and white hair, so I'm not actually going to paint that either. We're going to make this nice and quick and easy. That's going to be our plan. So I'm going to put our black away. Let's see what we can get from our little painting station here. And there's Contrast Paints has a fantastic paint that every human on the planet should possibly own. Um, it's brought back from the dead. It used to be a paint that Citadel had for a long time, and then they got rid of it, but then they brought it back. And I've actually had my second pot of this because I've been using it so much. It's awesome. My favorite paint of all time. It is my Snakebite Leather paint. This is my favorite one. Snakebite Leather is absolutely amazing. For those of you who don't have Snakebite Leather and you want to paint for any type of leather or any type of, like, strip straps or anything this is the way to go so we're gonna get some on our brush and do it I'm getting on the minis for folklore like the crate oh that's awesome but a lot of minis to paint <laughs> oh my son is apparently watching this too he's late to the party he wants me to paint baron zemo so for those of you that don't know i'm actually i do pay play uh uh that marvel champions game not marvel champions but marvel united no not marvel united well i can't remember the name of the game but this is the only one I have left to paint out of the core box. I haven't painted up Zver and Zemo yet, and my son would like me to because we play it sometimes. And he would like to play it. <laughs> All the rest of the minis are painted, though. We're going to put that right on here, right through here, this strap. We're going to paint this strap. That's the plan here. Oh, okay, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Crisis Protocol. Thank you. That was the name of the game. I couldn't remember. Marvel Crisis Protocol. For those of you who haven't played that game, that's a fun little game. Uh, they even have a competitive cooperative scenario out now, which I might, that's the one I'm going to try to show my son and we're going to try playing it sometime. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So we got a little strap here. We're also going to put a little more on because I've got more straps I want to paint. Notice we've worked on only her because I didn't have to do anything over here. This guy's going to be really green. I don't, I'm kind of worried about him. I don't know what we're going to do about this guy. We're going to take it. We're going to, should we use our bag with the same color? Yeah, let's put the bag the same color. I think that'll be just fine. We're going to put some of the snake bite leather on here. Um, when I'm painting, I always try to steady at least. I try to steady both my hands. It gives you a lot more control over your brush than if you're just willy-nilly holding it like this, trying to paint. Um, I'm also probably a little nervous because I'm actually live right now, so I'm, I'm probably going to shake a little bit too from that because that's just who I am. All right, I think that's. Oh, I want to get back here too. And race that. There's a little strap back here, so we're going to paint that strap like that. Now the good news is this paint is lighter than the black, so if I do go into the black, it's not the end of the world. It'll it'll be totally fine. Let's keep going here. I think that's going to be all I'm going to do for that. I'm going to put the... No, is that a strap or is that her? That no, must be a strap. Might be this. Might be a strap. I don't know. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave it just like that. Now, her goggles. What are her goggles looking like? They're black glasses. All right. Well, you know, i got a lot of black on here already. Maybe we should do... You know what we're going to do? We're going to do... But your primary color is going to be black and gray, if I remember right, from the cards and everything. I think we are going to leave it like that. Now, what is she holding here? She's holding a vial. Hmm. I got to make that kind of clear, maybe, or metal and orange. I like the metal and orange. If you look at the card, it actually has metal and orange in it, which is pretty cool. If you look at the card here, it's got metal and orange on this thing right here, which is kind of neat. So we're going to try to figure out if we can do something like that. Let's see what we can do here. First off, I'm going to take... I'm going to take... I think I'm going to take my electric blue. I've got an electric blue. It's off camera because I'm covering it with my face. Uh, this one right here, electric blue. This is from War Paints. I use this a lot when I do like glasses and things like that because it's just a nice little clear glass of paint that I can use. Now I also have a ton of these things. This is also where I put all my little paints. And as you can tell, I don't really care where I put it because all this is dried paint anyway. So I can just even put it wherever I want. I'm going to put it right there. Not a big deal. Put a little dab there. And that's where we're going to put it. And we're going to use that. And that's what we're going to use for painting this. And notice I haven't changed my brush out. I'm using the same brush. I love this brush. It's fantastic. Who's my favorite character in Nemesis? Excuse for gaming ass. That is a great question. Oh my gosh, who's my favorite character? Wow, talk about being put on the spot. They're all so cool. Um, I really dug the pilot from the first one. I thought that that character was pretty cool. Um, the other one I liked was uh, 
I don't actually have the medic. I'd really like to play the medic, but I should and I should probably pick up a copy of the medic somehow. Probably a third party or something. I think that'd be pretty neat. But last night, last the last playthrough I played, um, I really liked that lab rat. I thought that lab rat was pretty cool, being able to manipulate things in the darkness. But then I realized being in the darkness wasn't the greatest. It was it was tough news. Um, so I'd, <laughs> it was hard. Uh, excuse for gaming, xenobiologist. That's a that that's the one I'm excited to try. I think it's pretty cool how she can. Uh, it looks like she's able to use a lot of her powers or something to grab and hurt the monsters just from like ripping parts off of them, which sounds kind of cool. If I'm reading her right, I could be reading her wrong, but that's what it sounds like. So we got some glasses on. I think they'll be okay for the glasses. That'll be good. Now we're just, I think the only thing we got left is her shoes and the metal, and we're going to be done. But I'm going to get that orange in there. I'm going to get the orange. So there are a couple oranges here. We've got, I've got one orange and I've got a yellow. I've got this one, this yet in yellow, or I could use this. I think we're going to use this, Griffin Hound Orange. Another, all, now if you notice, I've done nothing but contrast except for that one paint that I used as part of her glasses. Let's put a little bit of that on our brush. And after I'm usually done painting, it's just an absolute mess of paint pots everywhere is usually how it goes. So I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to fit it in there. We're going to get it right, like put it in the camera, how about right in there and then the rest of this i'm going to probably paint metal so i can if i over if i go over it it's not the end of the world we're just going to put it in there and if anybody's interested i am using a one brush from series seven that's what i use to paint most everything i do have a smaller one i use for detail where did it go is it right here is this in this is the smaller one my o and that's my o this is smaller where's my smaller one i don't even know where it is. oh here it is it's hiding on me yeah, look at this guy. This is my smaller one. I use this. This is my smaller one. This one's a lot smaller. I use that for any kind of detail stuff I get to use, but not too often. And just because. So her orange is in there. We got the orange in that thing, which looks pretty sweet. And if I can get her to close up here, I'm pretty excited about that. The orange is right in. Let's turn it. There we go. Right there. There's your orange. I think that's pretty neat. So far, it's coming along okay. Hmm. I might. Tr I wonder if I should do something about her hair. I don't think I am. I think we're gonna leave it just as is. Cause like I said, just to get these quick and done. I need metal. Let's use gunbolt metal. Gunbolt metal is the one that I always use for my metals. All my metals are found over here. That's I kind of keep them organized. These are my metals. These are my browns to flesh tones up here. I have the a whole set of the washes from. Uh, what do you call it? The army painter. But I don't use them very much. Um, I got my black and white up on top, and then this is all my contrast stuff. And over here is where I keep my reds, my yellows, and all my greens. But I'm kind of in... I've got to probably change the camera on that one. <laughs> Wish I have a button for that. It moves me over to this side. <laughs> be the right thing to do. Um, let's see. We're going to grab... Uh, there's three different kinds. I'm going to grab Gunbolt Metal. That's the darkest metal, and I like that one the best. So I'm going to shake it up a little bit. I don't, really, I don't really ever need to shake up the Army Painter stuff. It usually just goes ahead and does what it needs to do so this is if you haven't noticed a lot of my painting thing here it's almost all metals because that's about the only color i need from there and eventually i'm going to run out of these we'll put a little bit down there if we can it slowly comes out i should probably if i ever needed to i can always i have a bunch of pins here as well and i can just poke through some of the holes on the top of these if they're not coming out but i don't need to Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna grab the metal on a brush, paint it up. Whoop, almost dropped it on the floor. That's one of my keys to victory, dropping it on the floor. And I'm just gonna paint all this metal. This is just what we're gonna do. We're just gonna paint all metal. There's no reason to not paint any of this not metal. That's gonna be the deal here. Just don't wanna paint her hair metal. That'd be awesome. Let's see what it is. Thank you very much. Uh, excuse for gaming it says my painting station is awesome. I appreciate it. I picked up those things i think they're from broken token a long time ago back when they were i think I, at gen con like four or five years ago i picked up the things that hold all these things up the ones right up here i picked them up there um some of the things i have in my painting station i have a whole ton of absolute ridiculous stuff this is as you can see a whole bunch of miniatures here i'm working on these are from uh wild ascent i'm still going back to wild ascent i've got two more playthroughs of that i want to do so i have those um I've got some stuff. Well, I've got Baron Zeno. We already saw him. He's hanging out here. Um, Colin and I were playing a game, um, and here's one of the miniatures from it that I was slowly trying to paint up for him. We haven't gotten a chance to get back to that game. 
Um, then I've got just lots of extra, you know, you don't want to see over on this side. That over there is pretty bad. But I do have uh, Soka. She always hangs out with me while I paint. She's from Disney Infinity. My kids, when they were younger, are huge in Disney Infinity. And so I've been able to at least save some of them. Most of our characters don't have lightsabers anymore. They uh, have gone the way of the dodo when it comes to lightsabers. We're going to keep on painting up all of our silver onto this character's little thing here. Just sweet. I think it'll work just fine. And after we do that, I do put a wash of, what do you call it, uh, null and oil is what I'll put on here. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could like really spice it up by adding some streaks and stuff of like light silver to really kind of bring out some parts of it. But again, I don't really do that. I just want to get this to the table so we can play. That's the plan, right? That's the plan. The plan is gaming. Gaming is the plan. Having cool things to game with, that's the other plan. So we're just going to keep on painting this, get it in there. Right there, I don't want to go onto that black. If I do, it's going to be tough to get off. But don't worry, I have a solution if I massively fail. There is a paint that Games Workshop uses that goes right with this. Now, another thing I'm interested in is I know that there's been some videos out there now on Army Painters paints that are very similar to contrast paints. I really want to see if I can see what it's up, see what those are like. I might pick up some of those at some point because I think those would be really cool to see. Let's see, that's looking pretty good so far. Let's get that cylinder up here that she has. Let's just touch that with some metal here. And I think I'm going to bring back the orange a little bit because I want to get the in. I think I want to do it on this side too. I don't know where I'd put it though. No, I think we're just going to paint this silver. Call it a day. Get it done. Here we go. Put some more on there. There we go. Keep it going. And I think that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll be good. Now I do have another thing down here. I'm not even sure what this is. I'm just going to say it's something that she's carrying that's going to be metal. But this thing right here, I'm not even really sure what it is that she's got there. That she's holding down at the bottom. This bottom part here. We're going to say that that is metal. I don't know what it is. It looks like a scanning device of some kind. Maybe a tricorder or something. We'll see what happens here. Tricorder, right? Hmm. Maybe a quad quarter? I don't even know what that means. Let's see here. Just going to paint it all silver. Call it a day. Maybe I will paint that strap now that I think about it. And then I'll show you my boots, my secret for boots. I got a secret for boots. It's a super secret, I'll tell you. I hardly wait to show you my boot secret. Paint the back of this here. There we go. I think that's pretty close to done. Let's see if we can get in the bottom here. There we go. All right. Yeah. Actually, I'm not going to paint. I'm going to leave it gray. I like it gray. Okay. She's pretty much done. I mean, that's it. Not too bad. Not too bad, right? Huh. I don't think much left to do to her. Except put our null and oil on, I think is what we're going to do. But I got my boots, my secret boots. Let me show you my boot secret. It's not a secret at all. It's, it's actually not a good secret. No secrets. I have no secrets here. There's nothing that I'm doing that nobody else has ever done. Uh, one could always use a paintball. <laughs> got a little paintballs on them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let's see here if I can figure out how to do this. Oh, do -do 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 -do. Here we go. Boom. We have to hit the show button. There you go. One could always use a paintball gun and unload paintballs on them. Could work, maybe. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Boots. Where's my boot color? I think I'd have these in the right color. Right order here. It's going to be a another contrast paint because they're awesome. All my, all my boots. All my boots are wildwood. Love this color. It's a good color. Good color for boots. They're made for walking. Yep, bet you didn't see that joke coming. <laughs> A mile away! <laughs> Again, no tricks here. Not even my jokes are tricky. Let's put some of that on my brush. There we go. And again, I still, I still bat some off. I don't like to have it soak. They always say to kind of glob this on. I don't really like to glob even contrast paints on. So we're just going to go right to our boots and paint them brown. All my boots are brown. If you look at all my miniatures, unless it's like some distinctive feature. All my boots on my miniatures are brown. It just makes things a lot easier. 
get some paint on there get from inside the cup there we go I've used a lot of these paints sometimes the paint sometimes the paints stick to the top where you can get the paints off the top of the bottle sometimes they don't because I've used them so much now if I hit the floor it's not the end of the world I do have some grays I can use to fix that if I need to but we're just gonna keep on going here paint my boots brown secret brown boots now again if you wanted to you could do a dry brush on top of this of like a lighter brown to really make some of the details stand out guess he's not gonna do that you're right me not gonna do it why because I just want to slop this on and drop it on the table. That's my plan. No need to be fancy here. Any paint is good paint. Keep on going. A little more paint on this thing. Get this done. I haven't actually painted for a while. I've been watching the Olympics a little bit. Because I'm a fan of watching sports. I've been watching a little bit of the Olympics. It's been fun. I haven't been super involved like I normally am, but I've been watching a few things here and there. It's been pretty cool. I like ski jumping. I used to... I lived in Poland for two years, and when I was there, I it was about the time there was a ski jumper named Adam Mawish, and he was absolutely amazing. So they were big into ski jumping at the time, so it got me into ski jumping, and they have a neat ski jumping area called Zakupane which was a pretty cool place. I got to visit there. It was really neat. Let's see here. Surprise, you don't use a painting handle. Ah, I'm glad you mentioned this. So I do have one. I have one actually in a secret, in one of my secret compartments here, right right here. Um, I got one in my secret compartment right here. Um, yes, I do have one if I wanted to use it. It's right here. I don't use it because I don't feel I get enough control. I like having more control and more steady thing here. Indra, hi. Nice to see you here. So I do have one. I bought one. I was really excited to use it, but then I found out that I was just too far from the miniature when I was painting, so I stopped using it. I just didn't, did not enjoy it. Did not enjoy it. Now, we are pretty much done with her. I'm going to let her dry. I probably could put the wash on right now and be totally done with her. I'm not going to do anything with this, and the only thing I have left to do is I will paint that base. That is something we're going to do. We're going to have to paint the base based on the color of her cards, which I have right down here. I want to see what color her cards are. I'm pretty sure they are going to be gray, is my guess. Let's see what they look like. Hers are... Let's see here. So she uses a blackish kind of color. So I'll probably use black as her base color. That'll be the color for my base. Yes, welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. I am painting up the next two characters I'm going to use in Nemesis. So this is kind of a sneak preview for what we're going to be using in our playthrough next. I am going to be using the Xenobiologist and we're going to be using the Hacker. My goal in the next playthrough for the lockdown game is to play on the harder side of the map and maybe even try the new faction. We'll see if we can do that. Or I might save that for a third video. I'm just a big fan of Nemesis and I, if you haven't noticed, I've done a lot of videos on my channel already on it. So I'm excited to keep on going with it. We're going to get our next guy out here. It's this guy. I hit a little bit of, oh, little bit of the base here with this brown right here. I hit a little bit of it. I don't know if you can see it. So let's see here. Xenobiologist is green character. No. Uh, no, the Xenobiologist is actually the black. It's this one right here. It's this character. This is our Xenobiologist. So I kind of painted it up with the black. Now, I didn't put any. I didn't try to do any of her neat insignias or anything. I'm just painting it just to get it down on the table as fast as we can. So I painted it with the black and the gray. That's my plan here. Yeah, it was black and white. That's really what it is. Now we're going to do, the next one we're going to do is our, going to be our, now we're going to hit the hacker. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting, interesting thing to do. Because um, he's a lot of green. And as you can see, there's a lot of green here. But I don't want to paint them all one color of green. So we got to use different colors of green. Maybe a little bit of browns in there. I might do some brown here on this. You can then probably need to put it up to the bigger camera. And this is really interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do about his face. Because his face isn't a face. It's like some kind of weird like thing going on top of it so i think i'm going to paint that i want to paint it metal but see how he's got this neat hose coming off of here too 
I'm really excited to see what I can do about that hose. I might paint that with that blue, that same blue you saw just a little while ago. I might give that a shot. Now, as for the rest of this, he doesn't really have like a gun or anything. Well, I guess he's got this thing here. He's got a pack here. Oh, this goes to his air supply here. All right, let's see if we can get down here. So there's like an, I mean, it's like an air supply or something here. No, let's see here. And his picture doesn't look anything like his miniature. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't helping me that much. Usually they do a great job of showing me. Like, for example, when I'm painting, like, when I'm going to paint up my, my Lava Fiend. Well, it looks pretty good there. So, like, I've already started him. I've probably started the orange. I'm going to start painting black and stuff on top of him. So, like, they really, they help you out, I mean, on some of these. Like, here we got this guy, River Guardian. Well, you know what? He's not too bad. Here we got River Guardian. Huh? Looks pretty close. I, thanks, thanks. I mean, that's exactly what the guy looks like. That's fantastic. This hacker doesn't look anything like this miniature. Oh, probably because I'm using the wrong miniature. Look at this. Maybe if I was smart, I might figure a few things out someday. Someday. Someday I might figure things out. That's something right there. No wonder. No wonder he doesn't look like that. He's, he, this isn't the right miniature. <laughs> Come on, guys. you got to help me out. <laughs> oh, I missed that. All right. So let's not use that guy. Let's paint a different guy up. Let's paint the right guy up. Oh, look at this guy. I bet. Let's try that one. Should we try this miniature right here? Maybe that would be the right one. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, the good news is we caught it before we painted it. That would have been something else. Now this makes a little more sense. All right. This is going to be a little bit... So that must be the sentry. That must have been the sentry. Okay. I bet that's who that was. Yeah, that was the sentry. Good. I'm not painting the sentry tonight. That's out of control. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see here. All right. So we're going to do a lot of greens here. And we got some brown pouches here. We got a gun. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for helping me there. I totally knew it was the right and wrong miniature. But a lot of this, I think we're going to keep it greens. And I might do two different colors of greens with some metal down here, maybe. That'll be great. <laughs> Please tell me you were going to stop me before I would have started painting the wrong miniature. T. Clark, an excuse for giving. Both said they realized I was painting the wrong miniature. You guys are funny. All right, let's get some greens. Now, here's the greens I have. I have orc green. I have military gr green here now this one's really weird because look at the bottom of this paint this is white you have to really shake this up this is out of control and no matter how much you shake this thing it almost never comes all the way off it's like a 10 minute process just to get this off now i'm not going to spend the 10 minute process to do this because i can just take a little stir stick i have here where's my stir stick my stir stick being no here i'll just use this a random bottom bottom of brush we're just gonna use this so we're gonna stir this thing up i'm just gonna stir the bottom of the paint up with it i like the idea of the blue hose yeah you might i think that it, I'm, when i paint them up i'm probably gonna have blue hose on them. i bet that's how it's gonna work so we're just gonna kind of get down in there get some of that stuff off the bottom of the paint just like that and just get that thing in there working around here i can kind of see some of it coming off there but it's not really working as well as i'm hoping but that's okay well, let's keep on going there get as much as we can off there and call that a day i'm just gonna put that right in my water cup and that'd be great. And then now we'll do some shaking and see if we can get that off. Ryan, good to see you. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Thanks for meeting me at paint table. Yeah, that looked a lot better. And now we've got almost all of it off there. So we're good. This paint's going to be good. This one's going to be good. We're going to shake that up a little bit. And I've got one more. I've got this Plague Bear green. Now this one, of course, also has two colors attached to it. But it's not the end of the world. This one shakes up pretty easy. I mean, it doesn't take more than a couple shakes to get this one where it needs to be. But you do have to shake contrast paints up quite a bit. A lot more than any other paint. It's just the deal. All right. So those are our four greens. There are three greens we're going to use. I have a ton more green. I've got all these other greens from Army Painter, but I'm not going to use them. I usually only use my Army Painter stuff if I need to like really hit a detailed spot or if I'm doing some kind of dry brushing on it or something. We're not going to be dry brushing these guys because, again, get it on, get them to the table. All right. Let's see what kind of greens we can do here. We've got, let's see here. There we go. I like this military green. Let's start with this one. This is a really good color. And get some on our brush here and we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put that i want to i think i'm still gonna paint this part a metal that top thing metal 50 shades of green oh yeah let's see what we can do here i'm gonna start on the back we're gonna start in the back we're gonna just touch all these little parts here and start going let's see your green there green there green there everything's green here we go let's get his armor kind of stuff here green i might do the shoulder pads a lay a more bright green Oh, I like that idea. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I'm going to paint this part here. I'm going to paint right. I'm going to paint the top one green. I'm going to paint the bottom ones. Not that same green. There, check this out. 
I'm gonna go just like this. Does that go all the way around? It does go all the way around. Okay. So I'm gonna actually have to paint over that. That's okay. Get down here. Do I want to still go with that green? Let's see here. I wonder if I should. Yeah, we're gonna keep going with that green. That's that command. We're gonna go down like this. He's gonna be all cold and green here. I don't really know. His could be his hand. Oh well. Could be real flesh right there. But that's okay. That's okay. Go green here. All throughout inside there, just like that. I'm going to go all the way inside this part here. I'm going to leave the bags. I'm going to color, come back to the bags. Go up through there. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something pretty cool. Hopefully, this works. We'll see how this goes here. Somewhere around here. I'm going to... Okay, if we notice here, see how he's got that cool-looking, like, V thing here going on? That, I want to stand out. I want that to be a different green. So, we are going to come in here and paint the sides of it on these two sides here. A different green just like that careful not to hit that part paint this part here green up into there there we go all right now what I need to do is I need to decide if I want to paint this green I think I'm actually gonna go another rule of painting is when in doubt use gold yep that's another rule of painting when in doubt use gold gold is cool Paint this like this. I'm actually going to paint these green right here. I'm going to go all the way across with this, with this green here. There we go. And I'm going to paint that that green color, which is going to be awesome. And I'm actually going to, now that I think about it, that's going to be amazing. I'm going to do it that way. Okay, that's what we're going to do. All right, this is going to be, this. his hood is going to be green. I think this is going to be pretty cool. So it's going to go green here. I like the green on the hood. But we don't want to hit his faceplate. Because I want to do his faceplate. I want to make that metallic. I think it would be kind of neat. Again, I want to steady. I'm using the table right here to steady this hand, and I'm using the table right here to steady this hand. Usually, I use the miniature to stable it, but I'm using trying to get it in the camera here. There we go. Up like that. Put a little bit of green there. Okay, I think we're going to be okay. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So, we got our greens. At least most of the green where I want it, I think. So, we got green kind of going around here. Need to hit a little bit more right there, I think. But if we look at the green in the back, there's a little bit more space we got to hit there, so that's kind of cool. And painting, paint the right miniature that you. <laughs> uh, T. Clark, you are hilarious. T. Clark tells me that uh, one of the rules to painting is to make sure you paint the right miniature, which is very, very true. That is 100% true. Very, very true. <laughs> paint the right miniature, he says. That's pretty awesome. Let's see here. Now I got to get over into this side. Let's see if we can get some of that done. Paint right there. There we go. The way they do their sun drop, sometimes the contrast doesn't stick to it. I noticed in the very first Nemesis uh, miniatures I painted, the sun drop uh, isn't really a primer, so it's really tough to get some of the paint to go onto it. I've noticed the lockdowns are the opposite. The contrast actually just goes right on it. It's super good. I love it. Oh, I wonder if he's got a robotic arm. Well, too late now. Now it's green. I'm going to paint it all green. Here we go. He's got a green hand even. We're going to go with a green hand. There we go. Because he's like sneaky. He's being sneaky. He wants to like hide. So he's going to be all green here. He's going to hide in the green room. The green room. <laughs> uh, I used to hang out in the green room every once in a while. I was in a band for a while. I'm sure people know that. Because all the bumper music here from all of my videos are my band's music. So I used to play a lot in a band for a long time. Until I got married, had kids, and continued on with my life. But being in a rock band was awesome. Had a great time. Good fun. Didn't tour very much. Just kind of stuck around in Minneapolis cities. Andrew. Hi, Barrent. I am too scared to paint any miniatures. Oh, come on! All you gotta do, see, as Rob from Rob's Tabletop World says, all you gotta do is get, get some paints, get a brush... And put anything on. Um, William at Hungry Gamers tell me how he just base coats. He bet like when he's playing like his games and he has to fight like a bunch of miniatures. Uh, he he will just paint them like this. Like he would do like a primer like this, and then he'll just give a black wash on it, and that's it. And it calls it good. Or maybe a red wash on it or something, because that's pretty cool. That makes the boss the miniature at least pop a little bit. Painting up to like really look good. That I mean, you don't have to do that. You just gotta get some get some paints, get a brush. Get to going. That's what I plan. I like it. I like painting. 
like I said, I started painting when I was doing uh, Warhammer Fantasy, and I painted a lot of orcs and goblins. Oh my gosh, too many orcs and goblins. I think I went through, I don't even know how much green I went through on those. That was unbelievable. Too much green is what I went through. All right. We've got his other arm done. We've got that done. Now I want to do, I want to try this. We're going to try this out. This could be a bad idea. We're going to give it a shot. You know, that's part of painting. Painting is experimenting. It's really, really fun because you ne sometimes you have vision and you go out on that vision and the next thing you know, that vision isn't what happened. And it either you have a happy surprise or you have an unhappy surprise. <laughs> Jason, hi, nice to see you. Love the content. Just started watching your lockdown gameplay. Can I ask if you have a preference between Nemesis, Nemesis, and Lockdown? You may ask. That's a great question. Do I have a preference? I really like the original Nemesis. I loved the uh, Untold Stories from the original Nemesis, and I'm excited to get to Untold Stories 3 to see what I think of for this one. Um, I really like the light mechanics. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm painting some light, light green, this lighter green on. I think it's look really cool. Uh, I really like the electric electric mechanic that they have where you kind of keep the lights on and stuff, though um, it's tough to do, and it, you drop yourself in the shadows a lot. I like that where they have like the two different types of surprise tokens. I think that's kind of neat. It gives, a more, it gives you more strategy to kind of keep doing all different... It's almost one of those things where you have so many things going on in the game, you have to decide, you have to prioritize. What am I going to do? What is important? Do I want to keep those lights on? Do I want to keep that elevator moving? Do I want to just get to a room where I can get my objective complete? Because while I'm doing it, I'm going to lose some of... I'm going to probably lose the ability to keep the lights on. Um, so I like that in the Numa Nemesis. I think that's pretty cool. The But the original Nemesis is a... It's one of those things like when I did my first live stream. It was, it was that... I did that Aliens game from 1986. It's one of those things where it's like, that's the game I I started with. So it's hard to go to the next one though i know i need to and i've only i haven't played it as much as the original nemesis um i do think from where i've played it now it is tougher for sure um agree with andrew i did just buy the reaper bones course set paint kit nice that way i don't mess up my board game miniatures go practice first very true very true though and it's and it's actually another good way to do it i don't know if anybody does this but um Another good place to start is, like you said, those Reaper Bone miniatures. They're pretty. They're pretty good to start with, um, and you can. I also have. I play. Uh, I play some tabletop role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and things. So a lot of the miniatures I have from my board games I use in there. But I also have some others that I don't, and those are some good ones to practice on because you can give it a shot. Take different colors and pour them in a cup that you can put a lid on. Put the mini in the cup, close it, and shake it. Ta-da! Painted mini with multiple colors. I, I guess that's that's one way. <laughs> that's one way to do it. Now, what should I do about this thing? Okay, so we've got his breastplate and stuff done. So I didn't really answer your question, except by saying that I like the old Nemesis. Um, I'm glad the new Nemesis is out. I think there's some new mechanics in it that really make it cool. The Meeple Marathon is here. Ryan, awesome to see you. Love this painting live stream. I've got my paints out now, and I feel like I'm painting in a group. That's what I'm talking about. That's good stuff. Everybody grab a miniature, get painting. So here we go. I've got, what are you painting right now, Ryan? What are you painting? I'd like to know. So I've got him all like this. Here's what we got. We got this guy going on here. Now just take a little while. There we go. What do you think I should do for that visor? Should I go with the light, the dark green? Should I go with a different type of green? Or should I go with the metallic, the metal? I think I should go with metal. And paint that thing like a, with the, the same metal I used a little bit earlier. Hmm. Tough choice. Oh, well. Let you see what you think. Um, it's like art class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't say I'm much of a teacher. I was a teacher for a couple of years. Did that. Did that. Two years of teaching. That was that was enough for me. I uh, taught in Poland for two years. That was enough. And then I decided I wasn't going to be a teacher anymore. When in doubt, go gold. Metallic is my vote. All right, we got metallic. We got gold. Um, here's the. This is actually the gold I use. So I have two golds. I'm going to use a little bit of gold. Um, I've got this one, which is this greedy gold that I get from uh, the Army Painter. I don't use it. I don't use it. Uh, Legends of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, sweet. I'll have to see some of those when you're done. Send me a picture. Some, send me some pictures. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, we have Retributor Armor. This is the Citadel's gold. I really like this gold. Fantastic gold. Whoops. There you go. Fantastic gold. Love this gold. So we are going to paint a little bit of gold, though. I like the idea of having these stripes go down him gold. I don't know what these even are. I'm going to say they're like conduits that are like connecting different parts of his gadgetry he has. 
That's right. Gadgetry. It's like go-go gadget. It's like Inspector Gadget. Probably too old for everybody to know who Inspector Gadget is, but that's okay. One of my cartoons I used to watch when I was a kid. There we go. I don't even know if I'm in the camera, but there we go. Get this going. There we go. Okay. I think we got that where I want it now. Um... Alright, I got metallic and I got gold. That's what I've got for my votes so far. But here's the here's the gold. Gold can be tricky. And then, now when you do gold, if you really want to, of course, make it what they say pop, because why not use the words pop? You can I've got Reichland Earthshade. This is the wash you use on gold. I don't know if I'm gonna use it on that gold because I probably will put a little bit on there. Because there's not a lot of the gold going on. Uh, another thing people like to do is sometimes have two different water pots. I don't have two different water pots. One for metals because some people, because the metals can kind of get into the other paints because it could be in your brush and then it's in the water and then it mixes with the other paints and then also next thing you know you're painting a color and it's got metal in it and it's next thing you know it's kind of in the middle. I don't really notice that. Maybe I should get a better glasses or something maybe, but I don't really ever notice that. So we're going to continue down this guy here. I've got pouches. We're going to do some pouches. I like this for pouches. Bronze faceplate. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I think we got a winner there. I like bronze. That's a good idea. Um, I've got skeletal horde here. We're going to use skeletal horde uh, for his pouches. I like that. Skeletal horde for the pouches. That's going to be our plan here. So we're just going to do all the pouches. He's got, see how he's got these pouches right here? We're just going to hit those with some of the skeletal bone, the skeletal horde here. And we're not going to differentiate the pouches. We're going to paint them all the same. Boom, straight across, done. If and when I ever get around to painting miniatures, my first mission will be to experiment to make a color that is red and slightly shiny. So it looks like it's wet blood from painting bloodborne minis. Oh, well, if that is your plan, T. T Clark. I've got something to show you after I get this brown here. Um, those that paint a lot might know what I'm about to show them. There's two things in my arsenal of painting that I think are absolutely amazing. I don't use them as much as I should, but I do. Um, they're, one of them is a technical paint from Games Workshop. It is, this one is called Blood for the Blood God. This I have. This is really fun. This makes, this is basically you're painting blood onto your miniatures. Um, trying to think of what miniatures I've used it on. I haven't used it on too many because I'm not a fan of putting a bunch of gore onto stuff. But when it comes to Bloodborne, it would definitely be something to put onto something like that. The other thing I have in my arsenal that is absolutely to die for is uh, a buddy of mine introduced me to it. Let's see if I can find it. It is right here. This is sweetness. If you can get your hands on this metal medium, what this does is it turns any paint into a metal. So if I mix these two together, I would have dragon red metal. So you could have like a red dragon armor or something. Um, I use this on my miniature for, uh, what was it? It was Forbidden Fortress. We haven't fought it yet, but I built that big dragon in Forbidden Fortress, and then I painted it with these with these kind of metals, and it was really fun. It, it look, really made a scale shine. So if you can get your hands on some of this, this metal medium from, I think it's Vallejo, I'm probably guessing. Yeah, it's from Vallejo. This is pretty cool. It turns any, arm, any, uh, any paint into a metal. It's pretty neat. So, for example, I could have turned this green, th I could make it a green metal face paint. Let's do that. Let's just, just so I can show it to you. All right, so I'm going to grab, oh, let me see, what green am I going to grab? They all look about the same as the other ones, so I'm going to think of a different. Let's go with, let's do that blue one again. I like that blue, but we're going to make it shine with the metal medium. Bloodborne Combat is one of my favorite in board game world. It is, it's a fun game. I should get back to that one. I haven't, been, I haven't done that one in a while either. I did a playthrough with Colin on that one. Colin and I had a, had a fun time playing that one. And i got to get him back to playing that again. We haven't had a chance to do that. Um, I'm going to use this, and we're going to use that same blue. Where did I put it? Here it is. We're going to use that electric blue, and I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to put some electric blue in here. I'm going to mix this all up so I can get this all on camera for you guys. Here we go. we got some... I'm just going to make room for it here. 
We'll scrape off some of that paint. I could just get a new one. Why don't I just get a new one? I've got more underneath here. I can just use another one. There we go. Make sure there's no dust in there. Perfect. I'm going to put a little bit of that there. There we go. Boom. Okay. Not much. I don't need much. Shake this up a little bit. And then put a little bit of this in there. Let's we'll see if this works. This is pretty cool. I'm going to put a couple drops of that in there. Okay. That should be good. I think it's usually about three to one on this. What I've noticed it really works as. And you mix it all together here. Maybe a little bit less than three to one, maybe one to one here. But notice now I'm going to get a blue metal here in theory. Let's see if this works. It's pretty cool. This is what we're going to paint them as. Though I did like the bronze, I like the bronze concept. Let's see if this works. That's going to be good enough. Mike. Let's see if I can get it right here. Yeah, that'll work. Put a little bit more of that in there. Boom. Let's make this off. Not off, but there we go. All right. Let's add a little bit more to this. It's like chemistry now. Let's see here. The unsettled minis. No, I did not paint those. Those, um, I oh, I remember he that game came like that for him. Um, he bought it, I believe, off a secondary market, and it was already painted. Those were pretty sweet miniatures. Better than probably I could have done. Let's see what we got here. There we go. Let's get a little bit more of this blue. All right. So now we took that blue and I added that metal medium to it, and this is what we got. So now, as you can see, it's more shiny now as I rotate it off the screen. Let's see if I can back up a little. Pretty cool, huh? It turns about any color into at least a little bit of a metal type concept, which is pretty neat. Yeah, those were really cool. He had some, those were really well done. Um, I, I don't know the whole story of where he got it and everything, but I know it was, he, I'm pretty sure, but he, he got it secondary and that was already painted like that. Pretty cool. All right, so now we got the face plant, though, I, like I said, I did like the concept of the bronze. I think that'd be kind of cool. I think we'll be good with that. Okay. Can I do that with that? Oh, that little thing sticking up there. I'm going to paint this little antenna that looks like it's sticking up. Might not be an antenna, but I'm going to say it is. There we go. Okay. Now we got the pants we have to do. Yeah. Those, uh, the metal, that metal medium stuff's kind of cool. We got the pouches done. We have this. Oh, I know what we're going to do here. <laughs> oh, that's going to be awesome. I'm going to paint a blue wire and a red wire. Or should I be a white wire? White and what are the two color wires that you see coming off things things usually? Is it red and white? Is that the colors that are normally coming off? Because if that's the case, I want to make a, those two colors coming off of here. That's going to be my plan here. And it'll be really cool. Um, I, want to, I want to get some more gold. I need to hit this thing in the back here. Well, there's more pouches in the back too. we got to hit the other pouches here first. That would be the plan. Where's my skeletal horde? Here it is. I know red is positive, if I remember right. And then the other one is like, I think it's usually different kind of colors. Could be black, could be white, could be wrong. All right, let's here. Get the rest of these pouches painted up here. Now he's also got a belt, and I'm going to use that same snake bite leather for it. Red and black. Thank you. We're going to go red and black. That's going to be our plan. All right. Got these painted up just like that. And I'm going to use the snake bite leather for the belt. Notice how I kind of start from the top of a miniature and go down. Um, that's usually how I do things. I'll start, kind of figure out what I'm going to do here, and I'll just keep on going. I usually don't bounce around a miniature. Um, the only reason I'd ever bounce around a miniature is if it, say I decided um, something was too wet and I wanted to come back to it, that'd be the reason I'd do that. There's some up here I didn't get. Let's get him with a little bit of green here. That's another thing with the contrast paints. If you do miss an area, you're going to know it, because it's not like with a shade you can, or a wash you could just like get it in the creases and say like, oh yeah, there you go. Like, and it just falls in there and keeps everything under control. Um, if you don't hit something with the contrast paint, you're going to see the gray underneath it, which is 
something you got to watch out for. But, you know, again, on the table, it's all that matters. Let's see here. We're going to get my snake bite leather. Where'd that go? It's out here somewhere. There it is. Got to get that. Boom, snake bite leather. I'm going to put that on the belt because I love snake bite leather. Super good color. One of my favorites. Let's see here. Where's the belt? The belt, of course, is hidden back here. So let's make sure I paint his pants, too. That'll be awesome. There you go. I got part of his belt over there. Let's see what's going on over here. A little bit of belt. I see it. It's really shaded, though, but that's okay. And I'm going to put that gold again coming down. I think that'll be cool. I don't doubt painted gold. All right. Red and black. Okay, that'll be next step. That is a great idea. Uh, Ryan says that he starts from the hard-to-reach spots and works outwards. That is a fantastic way to do it as well. I should do that. you think that would be the right way to do it, and it probably is the right way to do it, but I don't. So, like, for example, even on this miniature here, I probably should have tried to get those, those wires way in the back there painted up before I decided to, if I can just get it focused, before I decided to paint his arm. Like, I painted his arm there, which would be easy to get to, but it's going to be a little bit tougher to get to those wires back there. But I've already painted it, so I'm not going to... Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Uh, that's a uh, gamer dude. Nice to see you. Love your channel. Is the Patreon going to be up soon? Yes, it is. I'm actually going to be doing a a thank you video for uh, we I, I was able we we have gotten to six thousand subscribers um, and I'm going to be doing a giveaway and announcing a Patreon at that time that that's my plan because I want to put it kind of all together um, it's going to be a big milestone so I want to make sure everybody's involved and gets a chance at some fun stuff that's gonna be my plan red and black okay well I've got red blood angels red can't go any redder than that. Blood Angels Red is pretty sweet. I like this one. That's a good red. Now, of course, I don't know what side, the, which one I should paint red, which one to paint black. So I'm just going to paint one. Don't care if it's the right one or not. We're going to paint this inside loop here. It's going to be the plan. Thank you very much. Excuse for gaming. It says awesome. And I apologize. I totally forgot to be able to pop up the chat. And it's something I meant to do that I forgot to put in there. So, as Ryan said, it would have been smarter for me to get these done first before I decided to, uh, or sorry, Meeple Marathon, to go ahead and uh, uh, paint up the green area because now it's almost impossible to get to this stuff. But that's okay. Now, the red wire is actually going to look a little bit less red because the color of it is already sun-dropped with a darker color, but... That's okay. The intent is there, and that's all that matters. So I'm, I can't even see where I'm going right now. I'm just going to hit it and see what happens. That's my goal here. And if I don't, that's okay, because the other wire is going to be black anyway. That's the plan here. Yeah, it looks like a mess in there, but that's okay. You can always fix a mess. You can always clean up. That's the deal. Gamer dude, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, it's awesome. You are all greatly appreciated. I love you all. Here we go. Let's continue. Do the Citadel pits ever dry up if stored a long time? I have been interested in trying them. Only use Vallejo droppers. That is a great question. Let me find some here. I've been painting for a long time. Um, here you go. Here you go. All of these are dead. Every one of them. There's not, and I can open these up, paint's not going to come out of these things. And there's a good amount left in there. So yes, they dry out. Um, even the best of them. I have an Imperial Primer here. No, hey, something comes out. No, it's not even anything good. Just little drips of water. But no, none of this stuff is any good anymore, I don't think. No, the white is not in there. <laughs> so there's your answer. Uh, giveaway available to us in Australia. Yes, yes it is. Um, I am going to be giving away a game or else something that you can use to pick up a game. That is going to be the plan. Uh, yeah, all of it's dead. So actually what I use these for, if you notice, the tops of these, you can see the colors, but you can't. the rest of them are all gray. I prime with an airbrush. I prime everything with surface primer, this gray ghost surface primer. I think it's called gray ghost. I've covered up the 
rating here. Um, it's not gray ghost. Nope, it's ghost gray because apparently I can't read the first word of the word anyway. Even though it says ghost there, I decided to say gray ghost. It's ghost gray. I prime everything with ghost gray. That's what I do. So like all of these you see back here all primed with ghost gray. That's the deal. And then I paint on top of that with my, with my other paints. Uh, and I use my airbrush to do it. I don't actually use my airbrush for much else at all, which is kind of funny. You think I would have an airbrush that actually use its paint, paints, paint miniatures. No, I use it for priming miniatures. That's all I do, use it for. But it sure beats that little bottle there. I can prime an astronomical amount of miniatures. Um, so it's already paid for itself, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> Baron comes to your house and plays board games with you is the grand prize. Wow, that'd be an awesome prize. I don't know how I'd ever how I'd ever manage that one though. I think my wife would get upset if I took off for a while. Do that. Um, let's see here. I've lost track of this red hose. This one goes. Oh, I think it's right here. It goes up, down, and around. Nope, that's the black hose. So it must be this inside one here. This is the red hose. Here we go. Grand prize. Parent comes and plays games with you. I would love to play games with everybody I see. Um, sadly, I know I'm not going to be making it to Gen Con this year, so I won't be able to be there. But I will be the next year. I'm just going to paint this whole thing red. I'm going to figure this out. The black will go over the red without any problem. And we'll figure that out in a second here. Because I've ma massively made a mistake here on this. But that's okay. We'll fix it. Paint red down this one. Actually, I think I'm doing okay. It's going to come around. Oh, actually, I think I'm doing the right thing. Maybe. Um, n no. <laughs> Do you think two cords? I'd be able to figure out two cords. Oh, my gosh. Two wires. I've got to figure out two wires. Actually, I think I'm doing okay on the wires here. This one comes up here. Right like that. Comes down and around. And into here. Yeah. And this is going to be the black one right here. This one's going to come up and around. There we go. Yes. Okay. I think we're doing okay. Wow. This can't believe these cords are going to be a nightmare for me. Let's get the black and just do the other side. Should have just painted them one color, Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some black on this brush. and We'll get the other parts here. So we're going to make this one black. This one coming down and going up. Just like that, and that'll be just fine. And just think, later you're going to see these on the table, and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I remember when he painted that. It's one of my favorite parts of seeing the finished work in a gameplay. It's one of my favorite things. Love it. And I'm going to paint this one black too, because I think there's multiple colors, cords coming off of this thing. There we go. we got the cords figured out. Little little bit of a snafu there and it rolls up into him if we look here let's see here it rolls up into him in the bottom part here so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that but like right in there see how kind of the cord rolls in there I might just I'm gonna paint that red because at least that'll look kind of cool um, that's my plan here I'm gonna paint that red because red's cooler than seeing a bunch of black so we're gonna go with the red I got my red just put it on my brush paint it up Paint it all around the entire part here. That'll be perfect. Okay. Our cord is done. That was more of a... Uh, that, that, that took longer than it should have. Figure out what color and how to paint that cord. That was out of control. Back to him now. We've got, again, his pants. Now we're going to do his pants. Again, we're going to go with this green. I like that green. I think we're just going to go with the military green. I'm going to paint these silver. I think, oh, you know what I like... I like maybe doing this. We're going to use that blue again right in here. I think it's going to be really cool. One thing I like to do is kind of bring back a color into the model that I've used in some other part of the model to kind of give it balance. So we're going to make his shin pads that same blue. That's going to be the plan here. Now I can't get too close to this camera because it doesn't focus very well, I've noticed. But I decided to go with that blue there. I think they'll be kind of neat. That'll be the plan. Let's... Okay, and I think that's going to be all I'm going to do on that. Yeah, okay, we're good. 
Now comes the green, then the shoes, then the wash, and then I think we're going to be done. How about that, huh? Got two guys done. Not bad at all. This is that same, this is a fantastic green, especially if you're painting um, characters that have like a military style to them. That it's, it's basically the like same camo green, which is really cool, um, which is kind of neat. Now, I don't know how many people, I, I don't think they're out yet. Has anybody really tried those uh, army painter ones that are like this? Those, uh, what do you call them? I think they're supposed to be like fast paints or something, I think they called them. They're pretty much the same type of deal as these contrast paints, except um, they're, they have, they're out of those dropper bottles, which I, it was hard for me to move back to these pots after working, doing Army Painter for so long. Because I had, like you saw, those dead pots up there. And I've been using these for absolutely ever. They never go bad. Um, so I'm all, I've kind of been a big fan of those. But I really like these contrast paints. They're absolutely amazing. They're so good. Can't get enough of these things. Now, I'm not painting this stripe here, as you can see. I'm going to paint that with like a... I'm going to use that snake bite leather on that guy. We're just going to paint down here, get all this. I don't know what's on the other side, so I don't want to go too aggressive until I turn the miniature over. Let's turn them over and see what's on the other side. Okay, so yeah, I almost got towards that thing there. I am going to paint all this green, though. But we're not going to paint that. I like that kneecap being that blue. I like that blue on that kneecap. Yeah, I really want to try them too, Ryan. The, the are, are they called like speed paints, I think is what they call them? I can't remember. I've seen a couple people that have like been kind of showing them a little bit. How many paint job pots have tipped over? Oh, that's a great question. Um, how many? Now the question is, do you want how many have tipped over, or how many have tipped over in my lap? That's the better question. How many have tipped over in my lap? That's awesome. Those are my favorite. Um, I would say, even with just the contrast paints, my black is tipped over and my. Snakebite leather has tipped over on me. This is actually a second pot of snakebite leather. Um, and a lot of that comes from the fact that sometimes I, I've always come to shutting my pots. If you don't, they fall over. And it's almost like destiny. It, it's destiny. If you don't cover them, they'll fall over. That's the deal. But usually the one, that's the one that falls over is the one I'm using. But sometimes it's not. And then you're really sad. You're just like, oh, I should have covered that paint. What was I doing? So, yeah. <laughs> so yes, they have tipped over in my lap. They've tipped over onto the floor. That was a winner. But don't worry, I got it's, this is my painting station back here. It's okay if they fall on the floor. But then you lose all your color, and that's sad. Then you're really sad. And that that's the okay. That's the thing I want to paint. So I don't want to get that green yet. But I want to come all the way down here because he's got really his boots aren't really that big. They're like shoes more than anything else here. So I'm gonna keep coming down until we get to his shoes. So we go straight down here. He's got shoes. That's my theory here. Look at this. We're almost done here. This is pretty awesome. And they'll be all set for gameplay. So I've got a few things left to do on this guy. I've got his snake bite leather here. I want to put gold there. And then his gun. And I, don't, I notice he has this uh, brown part here. Or this handle. Oh my gosh. Baron learned something here. He's got a neat little handle there on that gun. I want to paint the stock brown. And then I got the shoes left to do, and we're going to do those with my special magic trick, Wildwood. And then I've got the little straps there I want to do with the brown snake bite leather and the gold on there, and I think we'll be close to done. Um, that's going to be the plan. So, let's close up that pot. Oh, no, he's got his tablet, too. What am I going to do about his tablet? And you know what? I could do that same blue. I think I still got a little bit left here with the, with the silver on it. Let's do that. Let's paint that like that. We're going to paint this tablet the same. But then, you know what? After it dries, I'm going to put some, like, little green marks on it to make it look like he's reading something. This is like his iPad. His future iPad. Future self talking to future iPad here. wonder if they'll have iPads in the future. We'll have something in the future like this. It's one thing I like about Nemesis. It really, I really like the stark nature of the, the game itself. I really like everybody else has said it really reminds me of that aliens feel where like the corporations are kind of the ones that have kind of 
put people out there to now I am painting the top of his pants here forgot about those oh no I almost forgot about that thing too I'm gonna paint that I'm gonna paint gold there you go right when in doubt gold I'm gonna paint gold because I think it'd be awesome A little bit of gold. Put on here. I'm gonna paint just that square. There's a square right in here. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can. See that square right there? You kind of can underneath that thing. That's gonna be gold. So that's gonna be sweet. Real careful not to hit the edges, but I probably will. You know what? I don't care. It's gonna look good. Boom. All right. I think I got it. Nemesis Solo worth the money. If you can get untold stories, super good. I did, but I'm also a really big fan of campaign games. If you haven't noticed, if you look at some of the stuff on my channel, I, I really like to play a lot of campaign games. Um, I really like to the way a story develops. Um, and I really like the way Nemesis itself tells a story every time you play it. I think that's a really cool feature of the game. Um, every time, And it's always just such an, a thrill ride every time you play it. Is one of the other reasons I really like it. Um, but solo, I, I, you know, it depends. I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of characters to play in the base box. You get what six? I should probably count them. I got them right here. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's five, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. You get six. Six guys. And I think in Nemesis, the same thing. <laughs> That's another great question. Is Nemesis Lockdown worth getting if you have all the stuff in the original Nemesis? I, I, the new mechanics they throw into the game, I enjoy. I think they're pretty cool. I like that lighting system. Um, I like the I like the elevator that goes up and down. Um, the new creature, the intruder itself, isn't something that's super mind blowing. Um, the night stalkers are pretty cool, uh, but any intruders you play are really neat. And I I think that's one thing that's really cool about Nemesis is the types of enemies that they've created are all so super different it's really cool especially in the original one they had those carnivores that are more about devouring and growing and you had the intruders that were well that they were basically aliens and then you had the uh void cedars which were probably my favorite one because they really instilled that idea of fear in it which i thought was pretty cool so i would i i think even just getting the if you can get all three of those that's really good and then the, so then you're really paying for the board, the new minute, the new guys, because like I said, the oh, they have. But if you can get the expansion to this, they've got a really cool one with the, was it the, uh, like, spore type creatures, which are pretty neat. But I, I just it, it gives you more variety. Um, is it worth it? I mean, it depends on if it's worth paying for. That's a good question. For me, it was because I knew I was getting new characters. I was getting a new setting. Um, the other side of the map that I'm hoping to do next playthrough of is pretty cool because you can go from compound to compound on Mars, which is pretty neat. It's something that's different um, from the original one. The so there, there's it, it. It's really hard because I can keep saying yes over and over again. It's all about whether you think it's worth it, and I know it's hard to say that, and it's not. It's not really a good answer. I don't really like that one. I bet, um, but it's the one I'm going to give you. If they made more Nemesis, would I buy it? Yes. Yes, I would. Because I think it's pretty neat. We're going to go on to the gun now. That's what we are playing here. Sorry I wasn't able to help you too much. I don't think I did a very good job with helping. But didn't answer that question very well. Apologize. Gamer Dude, cool. Yeah, most of my games are campaigns, so it'd be nice to have something that I can finish in one play. Right now, I like Cthulhu Death May Die for that, but... Thinking about Nemesis, Cthulhu, Cthulhu Death May Die is really good for that one-off play that really gives you the overall feel of a of like an entire experience. Um, I actually like Bloodborne better for that type of thing, where I'm getting like a like a three-part campaign type deal. Um, Cthulhu Death May Die is a quick game, which is kind of fun. Um, Colin really enjoys. I, I play a lot of games with Colin. And he really enjoys Cthulhu Death May Die. A lot of the guys, if you know the guys from the One Stop Co-op Shop, they, they have a tendency to like that one too. I think I'm the outlier on that one. I wasn't my favorite game. I think because it was over too fast. Um, it's one of the things. And I also found that some of the tracks you go up and down, uh, there's some clear winners and there's some clear not winners. And I really wish that would have been a little bit more, I think it would have been cooler to have 
I don't know. I don't think that helps, but <laughs> good enough answer for me. Locked on. <laughs> oh, I really hope you like it when you get it. Um, I, I You'll see more of it in action because I'll be playing with the hacker and the xenobiologist next. And they're going to be coming soon. Um, I actually have them on the docket for soon. Uh, soon being probably my next playthrough. I and Jill kill forth for the zero to hero and narrative of how the sagas unfold. Yes, very similar. Very similar. You go from heroes zero to hero. And that happens in the Cthulhu Death May Die as well. Um, one thing I thought was really fun, if you ever watch, uh, Colin and I did do a playthrough of the giant miniature, and I painted that one. That was a lot of fun to paint. It was huge. Biggest miniature I ever painted. Um, and Which was pretty awesome. I was hoping to get a hold of the Marvel Zombies game where I could paint that giant Galactus, but Sadly, the I I had to pull out of that one just because it just getting it started to get more than I was really willing to pay for it, which was really sad because the game itself looked really cool. I'm gonna try to pick it up in the uh, at like when it comes to retail because they usually bring the game to retail. I know that means I'm not gonna be getting the Galactus, but that's okay. I'll live without it. I've got a Galactus. He's up there. I don't know if you can see him in the picture, but he's right up there. Barely. I think his feet are in the picture. I got him from uh, my Hero Clicks. Oh, yes, Madara. That's that's my favorite game. I'm glad you liked it. Um, I'm losing the chat. You guys are going faster than I can read. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got here. I have I have to table something different. I'm getting tired of losing. Stardew Valley and Lockdown are killing late. Stardew Valley is so fun. That's a really good one. Um, that was one that Colin introduced me to, and I was really glad he did. That was a really fun one. Um, that's one that I want to play with my wife yet. We haven't had a chance to do it yet. Just received Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Seems like it will be a little more friendly. Have you ever played Unfathomable? That's another great question. No, I haven't. I saw it yesterday at the store. I went to my f local game store called uh, the... Uh, wow, it's totally drawn a blank. Um... Cafe Battleground Cafe uh, is my local gaming store here that has like a lot of games you can buy. They have the ones you can play and things like that. And I decided not to pick it up. I still have to. I, I'm thinking about it. I've got what is it? The one that everybody Dead of Winter, the trader mechanic. And I have no problem with the trader mechanic. I think it's kind of fun. Um, it's just I have to get the right group to play that. So it's it's hard to pull a trigger on a game when I know I have to have a specific group to play it. Because normally my group does not do well in those type of games, uh, so we haven't really gotten. I, it's in my it's in my thinking pile, my thinking about buying a pile. Is the deal? I'm staying outside U.S. and Europe. Which website can I order Nemesis Lockdown? I am new to board gaming, and I know this game through a Meet Me at the Table, Matt. That's uh, I sadly don't. You know, you could almost. I wonder if reaching out to. Awaken Realms would help. I don't know if it would or not. It could. It doesn't hurt. Um, I can't... I wish I could tell you. I wish I had an answer. Um, I mean, the secondary market might work. I, I don't, never know. I never know the answers to those things. I wish I did. I failed you. Maybe somebody else knows a good place. Um, outside of Europe and U.S., uh, eBay, yeah, that would be the, the way. I don't know how much. I mean, I've had some. I bought some on eBay, and it took a monstrous amount to ship it somewhere. And that's that's the that's the terrible thing right now. Shipping is astronomical, and it's really too bad. All right, so I'm sorry. I'm talking a lot. Not to tell when I'm painting here. So we're painting this. He's almost done here. We're working on. I need to get some green in here. I noticed I missed the inside here of his leg. But I've got him pretty close to done here. We've got greens all over here, which is pretty cool. We've got this, the the pads. We've got his helmet. We've got his pad. Oh, I was going to put some green on the pad. We'll do that. Only thing left, I think, are the boots. We did the back part here, which is pretty neat. And I think, yeah, I think that's about it. I think all you do is the shoes. I think we're getting close to done here. <laughs> Five years. Is that how long? Wow. That's that's quite a while for a game, man. You know, I I can't say that I'm still. Where am I? Do I have them still back here that I'm working on painting? 
I still am waiting for my myth. My myth, my myth miniatures. Where are my myth miniatures? <laughs> I know in theory they're on a boat somewhere. Probably a boat with billowed sails coming down the line here. Um, where is snakebite? I want snakebite leather. So myth, myth miniatures. I guess that's probably equally as equally as sad a story there. That's that's a sad story. Come on. And I do more myth. I really like myth. Myth is a fun one. What I really like about Bloodborne is the three chapter setup. Yes. Uh, each campaign, each chapter is short enough to be one shot. And if you want more, there's still two chapters in the campaign. Yes. And that's that's very true. And I like I like the minis in that. They look really cool. Um, they're really uh, packed in 2017. They really give that feel. Um, it's, it's another game I turn to when I'm grabbing miniatures for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, right now my group is actually, when we ended, um, there is a ha night hag in the room. And so I use one of the miniatures from from Bloodborne as it. And it works perfect because it looks just like one. It's absolutely fantastic. A lot of the, uh, does allow a lot of flexibility in my playtime. Very true. Man, now I want to get back to that game. I don't really, maybe I should paint some of that next time. That's what that's that's gonna be part of. I think that might be part of the Patreon. I'll let you guys decide what I paint. That'll help. And that helps me get stuff to the table because I'm gonna have you ask me what I want to put to the table, which then asks me what I'm gonna paint. That'll be a, a pretty awesome. We have his boots. Let's do his boots here. You ever thought about running a live stream D and D? Good question. Um, I brought it to my group and it was it was uh, it was it was shot down, shot down, um, pretty quick. And that's fine. Everybody's got their thing. Working on his boots. We're going to get these all green. Or we're going to paint them brown with our secret brown. Wildwood brown. Boom. A little more brown there. And those boots are close to done. Over here. There you go. Now that I hit the, didn't hit the base. That's good. Now if I did, it's not the end of the world. They list all countries under payment and delivery. Oh, for Nemesis. Yeah, that's kind of the... I'm, I do feel it's, it's kind of sucky about some of the countries that are like outliers that don't have a lot of access to stuff that I, I know that's what he's talking about. Um, I really wish that it could just be like a universal type thing, like, all right, here's the deal. But I, I, I understand it can't. I, shipping is just one of those one of those evil necessary evils that we have to deal with, especially with board games, especially some of the bigger board games. I mean, monstrosities out there, a lot of them. I'm probably getting most of them. There we go. He's pretty close to done. Oh, what color should I put on the tablet? Oh, what am I thinking? Somebody said bronze. We're gonna put some bronze on that tablet. We might put a little gold on that tablet too. All right, so we're gonna use my detail brush here. We're gonna see, I'm gonna try something here. This is something I'm out of my comfort zone, so we're gonna give it a shot. See how this goes here. It's probably a bad idea. Find my little teeny miniature little brush here. I put a little bit of this bronze on here and we're gonna dab that onto this little pad here. Yeah, it kind of looks okay. Actually, it looks pretty bad, but whatever. There you go. Okay. I'll show you. It's, <laughs> it's something all right. <laughs> all right, check this out. So here's the pad. I put the put some of the silver on the, or the bronze on the pad. Let's see if it focuses. There you go. Bronze on the pad. Not the greatest bronze, but, you know, it'll work. So there you go. I think this guy is pretty close to done. He's got all the stuff on there. And that's pretty good right there. I just got to paint his base. I'm going to put some Nullin oil or, or the shade on his gun too is what I got to do. So let's do that. It's funny because I found your stream on the same week me and my friends decided to learn 3D modeling so we can make our own nemesis characters. Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I do not have a 3D printer. I don't know if I ever have a 3D printer. I probably won't have a 3D printer. Um, I just, I have so many models already. I don't think I need a 3D printer. 
But I see all these like neat little things you can make with 3D printers, and I always think, oh, I should probably get one of those. Especially like inserts for games. That's another thing you can do with 3D printers that I, I don't. I should probably think about it. Speaking of monstrosities, Machina Arcana is getting closer. Good. Everybody needs Machina Arcana, and they need it as fast as they can get it. Um, lucky for me, I do have an ear to the ground with the creator. He actually sent me a early copy so I could do those playthroughs, which is very generous of him. It's very nice of him to do that. He's a really neat guy. Here is what is called Melanoil. It is a shade of all shades. It's a black shade. What's this going to do? It's going to dull down the color of your of your of your paint. So it's really going to make like it, it makes some of the it goes into the recess. Very similar to what these what the contrast paints have been doing already. Is they paint go on the top and they kind of go into the recesses. Well, this is going to I do these on the metal because that's not a contrast paint. So we did it on the gun. The gun's done. Now we're gonna go find our, here she is. Go back to our xenobiologist here and we're gonna put some of that on here as well. Oh, and just for people to know, uh, the second lockdown video is going to be coming tomorrow. It'll be out tomorrow morning, probably about the time I go to work. That'll be my plan. I'm gonna finish painting this and I'm gonna put it up uh, and get it ready and set it for tomorrow. Right when you wake up. So I'll be ready to go. <laughs> Machina Arcana is in a port about an hour from just teasing me. Cruel cruelty. Well, it is Machina Arcana. So, of course, she's going to tease you and be cruel to you. That is what she does. Machina Arcana is known for that. So, it lives up to its name. That's pretty sweet. It is taunting T. Clark. I love it. He's a little taunting in his life. So now, if you notice the difference between... Let's see if we can do this. So you're going to see her metal thing that she's holding. If I can spin her back in. And then, of course, the null and oil down metal. If I can get these things to work right. One's a lot brighter than the other one. And that's the way I like it. I like it more the dull down. You can even see it down with you look at her little pad. Is more shiny than the top part. So that's what null and oil does, and it's amazing. I love it. So when you're thinking about painting, pick up a few paints, pick up null and oil. Good to go. You can paint. You can dull down about every color with it, which works awesome. I'll paint right on that metal, just right there. Paint it right on there. And boom. I'm going to touch up here, but I don't want to get it on that orange, and I don't want to get it on her hand, so i got to be careful here. Not get it on her hand and not get it on the orange. It's going to be kind of tough. But there we go. I think we got it. I think I put a little bit too much on here, so I'm just going to soak it up with my brush. I'm going to dab my brush off, and then I'm going to soak up a little bit more because I don't want it that much on there, especially in the back. There we go. Okay. She's done as well. So at this point, the only thing I have left is their bases. Because I think they're going to be good. Those are my two guys. And see, from the that view, which is where you'd probably see them on a table, totally fine, man. Boom. Characters, ready to play in a board game. At least that's my theory. Good to go. Slop and drop. Paint on the table. Paint them on. Paint them off. Notice I didn't do any type of highlights. I didn't do any type of dry brushing. I didn't do anything like that. And I'm not going to for these miniatures. This is fine, just like this. That's my theory. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this gray because I've noticed that I touched her base with this brown right here, and I'm not happy about that. I could go through and paint all of their bases with a metal. And then non oil them if I wanted to. I think I'm, I don't remember if I did that with the other ones. But I'm just going to paint a little bit of this brown, this gray right in there. So it kind of covers up the brown, but it's not going to cover up the fact that they washed it. it. It does a little bit, but you're not really going to notice it from the distance I'm playing it, which is going to be fine. So we've decided that it's bedtime for him on the East Coast. Great live stream. Brand. Thank you so much, Ryan, from Meeple Marathon. If you have not checked out Ryan's channel, please go check out the Meeple Marathon. He is amazing. He does some great unboxings. He does great playthroughs. They're a lot of fun. I really think people should go check him out. He's super cool. He's also a nice guy. I've contacted him a few times. We've talked a little bit. It's pretty, he's a pretty awesome guy. Thank you so much. I mean, to be fair, after all the teasing I've done for you, I probably have it coming. <laughs> this is true. T. Clark teases me all the time. He deserves to have his game stranded in the ocean. 
I can't recall. Do you have the intruders washed or painted? Good question. Um, the intruders for this game and all the other ones are all sun dropped, so I didn't touch them. I did not need to touch them. Um, that was the deal. Uh, let's see here. I was the IDW Batman game fan. Fun. Was the Batman game fun? Yes, super fun. Um, I was not impressed with the scenario designs that I ran into. I really like the game. I love the dice mechanics. I love placing dice. I think this is the one you're talking about. Um, if it's not, tell me if I'm talking about the wrong game. Uh, but a hard time with some of the like designs of the missions. Um, I wanted more missions where I had to actually stop the villains. A lot of them had to do with like just saving people or disarming a bomb or something of that nature. Uh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> T. Clark is apparently in for the long haul tonight. He is not going to bed. That is going to be his deal. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, there's, I, I had a lot of fun playing it, especially doing with all the extra stretch goals. I was able to play with like Supergirl, which was sweetness, um, especially because I was just finishing the CW show. So it was really cool to play with her. Um, and I was a big fan of the Batman animated series for the longest time. So it was really cool to see all those things and having all those villains around was cool. But again, I had a hard time. I wish I could just be like, okay, you need to stop Scarecrow. Like, go beat him up. I'm like, that would be awesome. But it'd be like, okay, stop him from spraying fear gas by stopping this, which is what I think the playthrough I did was. So I don't know if it's one of the other ones. What I'm doing now is I'm actually just going to paint their bases. So I'm taking black and just painting all the way around her base. They do have those rings in the game, but I don't like the rings. Um, I did this for Madara as well when it came to the enemies. I painted them. They actually had just enough of the exact miniatures in there so you could paint the ones so that you would have them, when you put them on the board, you have the colors instead of having to use the rings. I'm not a fan of rings. I'm not a ring person. As you can tell by the fact that I don't even wear a ring. Funny story, I had a wedding ring. I threw it away by accident. There you go. Funny story. Um, not really that funny. <laughs> Yes, I threw my wedding ring away. Um, for those of you that know, I am a nurse. I'm working surgical environment, so I'm not allowed to wear jewelry. So at one point, I had taken it off and placed it somewhere, and then later I threw it away by accident. So it was by accident. Yep. So I, But that's okay. Now I've got to figure out what green I'm going to use on this. I think I'm going to use that same army green. I'm going to use an army green from Army Painter for his base. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that. So I'm putting it over here on my off camera here. I got that little tray of paint, so I'm just putting it over here on those paints. <clears throat> yeah, let's take it straight from there and go. Want to paint them? Not sure how to. Yes. Um, yes. That was a trouble for me, too. Uh, the, there were a lot of them, too. There was a lot of miniatures. Um, the good news is, at least with those, they did give you a card for all the miniatures in Batman, so you knew kind of what to go for when it came to painting them. But, man, I, it, they're just so iconic. It's almost like painting, like, the Avengers and stuff from any of the, like, Marvel Crisis Protocol and stuff. It's really tough because they have such an icon. You, you have to make them look just right, or people go like, well, that's not what that looks like. Where it comes to this guy, I don't care, I paint him. He's not an e-commerce or anything. He's just a guy with green on him. Does that make, make sense? Love the live chat. <laughs> Eric is here. Nice to see you, Eric. Eric is a buddy of mine. He actually is one of the people that plays D&D with us. He's a good guy. But I... So I have a hard time painting iconic characters. They're really tough for me. <clears throat> Though I did paint all the Crisis Protocol for my son. We had a good time. Did you back Marvel Zombies? I did! I did back Marvel Zombies, and then I backed out, and I backed out of Marvel Zombies. I really wanted to get Marvel Zombies, but I just, in the end, I was looking at, the price of it was just too much. I couldn't, I couldn't see myself playing it enough to justify the price. Am I going to kick myself in the head later? Probably. Probably going to wish I had Galactus, but that's just the way it goes. Sometimes you just go with what you got. 
I was I originally backed it. I was in until they started putting expansion after expansion because I'm one of those hard people that has that whole FOMO problem where once I see something I'm like oh, I could get the re I need that I need that to go with it. So I'm usually one of those all in or nothing type of people, and it was getting just too much for the all in on that one. But <clears throat> there we go. I think we got our two guys done. Let's take a look at them. We've got our little dude here. He's good to go. Boom. See if I can get him to see if I let's see if I can learn my cameras here. Boom. There is our hacker. Our hacker is good to go. He's gonna start hacking on the Nemesis lockdown. Now I did know you can't bring these guys to the Nemesis, but you can bring the Nemesis characters to lockdown, which is pretty cool. I think that's really neat. So here's our xenobiologist. All done. Sorry, it's been a little bit. Thank you very much. Everybody's saying it looks fantastic and they like the way it looks. Thank you. And this is this is it. That's slop and drop. They're done. I didn't I've noticed I didn't do any type of highlights. I don't do any type of... Uh, I could do some type of dry brushing if I wanted to, but I think I'm okay with them the way they look, they look. I mean, like, I could put a yellow dry brush onto this thing and I think it might help a little bit, but I'm going to leave it as is. Because it's kind of a dark, a dark game. Um, and I think I like having that dark look to it. So I'm going to keep it like that. I think that's the deal. But I think we're going to end the stream here. I'm all done. I appreciate everybody who's come in and had a great ta tape time. Fun fact, I used to know someone who was a writer on Batman the Animated Series. Really? Ah, oh, T. Clark. You know, oh, you got the in. You got the in. Oh, this is awesome. So I'm going to do more of these. I'll set these up ahead of time so people can see. Uh, I know people are interested in watching me magnetize a guy, so maybe I'll do that one. Might be one of the next ones I do. Uh, or I might do a couple last two guys for Nemesis, or I might move to another game that we might be coming to play. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I helped. I hope you guys enjoyed the painting stream. It was so much fun to just chit chat with everybody. I really enjoyed that. That is like a highlight of being able to do this live as opposed to, I love to hear, read all the comments everybody says, and I, I do read them and I do respond as you probably all know, but it's also cool to just be able to uh, interact with you. P.S. Love the Core Quest playthrough. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was, that was a special one for me. My son and I loved doing that one. And we had a good time. We've actually been playing it quite a bit, actually outside of the the game, uh, outside of the camera. Yeah, we've done the we've done almost all of them now, which is kind of cool. My wife has actually even taken it to school to play with her students there. She works at a inner city school in St. Paul, Minnesota, so she is trying to bring some of these cool cooperative games to some of the kids that so they have a chance to see some of these awesome games that I don't get to play very often. So it's pretty neat. So it's it's been around. It's it's it goes around, and it's uh, it's a great game. But that's it. Thank you. My son does prevent very well. I <laughs> it's so much fun doing stuff with him. Uh, it, we're hoping to maybe get to Eileen something shiny. We'll see if we get a chance to do that. But we might not. We might be able to do it. But it's awesome to see all of you here. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you all for being part of this special first episode of my painting. Um, <laughs> I should show some of my earlier paintings to show how some of your progression of your skills. That's a great idea, Eric. I should definitely show that. Um, I will make sure to have some of those for the next episode. I do. I'm probably going to try to do this maybe every other week. So maybe next week, I next time I do it, because I don't think I have any right in... I don't have anything prepared for that. <laughs> so we're going to do it later. <laughs> I don't think I have anything back here that's from my old stuff. I do. It's all boxed up. Like, Because I remember I started playing Warhammer Fantasy, and it's been a long time since I played it. Um, actually, the person in the chat named Eric was one of the ones that played it with me a lot. And we haven't played it in a long, 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 long time. So, But those are the first miniatures I put together. This is the first miniature I painted. So, yes, I'm going to bring those out, and I'm going to show each and every one of you what it started like and where I am now. And just to go to show you that just keeping on doing it, and having a good time doing it is all that matters. I mean, set something up to listen to while you're doing it, and you can have a great time. It's really just a nice, really relaxing, relaxing thing to do. So, again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will hopefully see you all at the next, I guess you could say, I will see you at the next painting table. And until then, I appreciate every one of you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you again next time, and we will meet each other again at the table.